Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk about a news story between OpenAI and, yep, NVIDIA's back in the news again. This time, the headline is that they are together announcing the building of a new AI factory that's rated at 10 gigawatts. Yeah, 10 gigawatts. That's a <laughs> that just rolls off the tongue like uh, just another uh, technical spec, doesn't it? What exactly does 10 gigawatts of power mean? 10 gigawatts is continuous load. It means the facility would consume 10 billion watts every second, multiply across a day, and the requirement is 240 gigawatt hours of energy. Across a year, it becomes 87 terawatt hours. That is more electricity than Switzerland consumes annually. So the question isn't, can we build more AI? It's, how on earth do we feed that monster? Let's start with the oldest answer, coal. To sustain 10 gigawatts of power, if I had a coal plant that was that big, it would have to be capable of burning through somewhere between 65 and 90,000 tons of coal each day. Well, that's kind of hard to envision. I mean, that's a pretty tall mountain of coal, but what is it? <laughs> that translates to about anywhere from 600 to 1,000 full train cars every single day without let up. So, and that increases the demand, obviously, for coal, which will drive up your electricity bills. And the need to move that much coal to the data center's power stations will obviously take diesel fuel to get it there because that's what trains run on. And so, yeah, that's going to drive the cost of diesel fuel up as well, won't it? Well, what if we say, okay, well, maybe coal isn't the right thing to use. Let's switch over to nuclear. Well, nuclear can solve it, but it will take 10 full-scale nuclear reactors ap operating at a maximum capacity, which is, that's not wise. So, yeah, generally, yeah, you'd want a little bit of cushion there and not be operating them at full tilt. So, in theory, the uranium mass is much required for that is smaller than coal. It amounts to just a few hundred tons uh, per year. Uh, compared with the millions of tons of coal that would be needed. But reality comes in here somewhere. So first of all, the United States hasn't built a new reactor in over 30 years. So there's going to be some licensing and construction issues. Yeah, and it would take decades to build it. Uh, there's some safety concerns that remain around nuclear power containment, but what about the waste? What do you do with nuclear fuel? Once it's spent, what do you do with it? The other thing is uh, in the area of the country that this probably would be built in would be seismic risk. In a normal operation, reactors still vent an immense amount of hot water, and those usually get dumped into cooling towers first to cool it down enough to be able to mix it in with cool river water and oceans, but uh, yeah, if you don't do that, you've got disruption to ecosystems. Additionally, nuclear carries latent failure modes. Under emergency conditions, radioactive steam may be vented or cooling water contaminated. Events at Fukushima and Chernobyl demonstrate the persistent hazard. So n nuclear, however, isn't a free pass, as we can see. It, it trades one set of hazards for another. What about renewable energy? Let's, let's look at solar. Solar, at an average of 25% capacity, requires nearly 200 square miles of panels to produce the same 10 gigawatts uh, watts of power continuously. And when the sun goes down, you need something to bridge the night, and that requires vast battery storage. It also increases the number of panels you need because you're not just producing 10 gigawatts of power. You also have to produce enough power to recharge those batteries from one night to the next. So each one of those batteries represents a, a toxic mess uh, because of the chemicals involved in making them. 
those batteries are also destined for replacement every decade. What about wind? Wind is equally unreliable. It's only produced when the wind blows. And so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you've got the same problem almost as solar, except wind could operate at night, but it only, <laughs> but it'll only work when the wind blows. And the size of those towers have to be absolutely huge, and you're going to need miles and miles and miles of them. Is wind really viable? No, probably not. What about tidal? Well, tidal could be consistent, with, but it's weak. Uh, even the world's largest tidal pools at Sinwa Lake in South Korea only generates about 250 megawatts. That's a fraction of what would be needed. Uh, I estimate that the number of tidal generators, based on spacing, would need something like 10 miles of coastal area in order to function at 10 gigawatts uh, of power. And again, tidal is not constant. Uh, it depends on the tidal forces and the tides as they come in and out. Those represent peaks. Uh, but, not all, but not all tides are, are powerful enough to turn the rotor. So they're, even in that instance, there's times when it may not be delivering peak power. And again, you're going to have to rely on batteries for that. What about hydroelectric? The biggest dam that we have is Hoover Dam. That produces about a maximum of about 2.2 gigawatts of power, which would, that would mean, oh, I would only need about five of these then, right, to hit 10 gig. Yeah, but uh, that we don't operate the Hoover Dam at 100% capacity. There's not enough water most of the time to drive it at that capacity. And most of the, I think on average, it runs at about a half of, uh, about 500 megawatts. Unfortunately, there aren't any rivers that you can dam right now in the U.S. I'll have to invent, invent a few, I'm afraid, uh, to, uh, and besides getting the permits and the disruption to the land behind it, because you basically have to flood whatever's behind the dam. So yeah, that's going to be kind of a problem. So yeah, Hoover Dam, I think that's out. Um, yeah, and the, even if you could build it, that you're each, you're talking about seventy-five to a hundred billion dollars worth of investment in today's money to to build the the equivalent of the Hoover Dam. That is correct, DJ. Hoover Dam itself has a rated capacity of two gigawatts, with average output closer to half a gigawatt. A 10 gigawatt AI plant requires the equivalent of five Hoover dams at peak output, or 20 Hoover dams at average production. The cost of one Hoover dam today is estimated at 15 to 20 billion dollars. Let's talk about what happens once you've solved all of that. Once, what happens inside the walls? Well, first of all, for every watt of energy you produce, you have a watt of heat that's produced along with it. And that means at 10 gigawatts of power, you're going to have 10 gigawatts of heat to have to be removed. So cooling is going to be astronomically important. And guess what? That takes power too. You have compressors, you have uh, fans, and you have pumps that are running in order to move uh, the coolant around. Plus all those pumps and everything, those take energy as well. So you have to add that on top of the cooling costs of not only removing each watt of heat, but also what it takes to actually generate uh, the amount of movement necessary to actually provide the cooling. So as the load scales up, the cooling burden climbs just as fast. And cooling itself pro pro produces more heat, as we said. So energy obviously can't be created or destroyed. It can only change its form from one to another. That is correct, EJ. At these loads, efficiency declines logarithmically. Cooling demand scales with power. The net efficiency of the system collapses under its own waste. We've reached now the really the hardest wall of all to, res to resolve, and that's reliability. Data centers of that size require some kind of backup if power were to be lost completely. 
So at least they could spin down safely. However, I don't know of any system that is, that is scaled up that large that would safely bring that many systems and that much power down uh, without ending up having to just pull the plug and let it crash. So, yeah, the, the, uh, the graceful kind of power down using UPSs, I, I don't know what you would use to do that. So, just, yeah, there's, how do you switch 10 gigawatts instantly to a backup source? Even if it was a battery, you're still waiting for a bunch of generators to power on. The largest generator I remember seeing was the one at Cape Horn. Uh, yeah, that, and that, that was nowhere near 10 gigawatts. There is no field guide for a facility of this magnitude. Instantaneous transfer is not feasible. Cooling plants cannot be UPS back. Generators cannot ignite fast enough to prevent interruption. Systems of this scale must fail gracefully. I think the, pre the press release, uh, as the press release sails on, and uh, as though power, fuel, cooling, and resilience were footnotes, Let's be honest, that's not engineering, it's theater. We're awed by the sheer size of this AI data center idea. And I'm sure that NVIDIA would love to build it, but from the standpoint of power delivery, at this scale, the logistics of moving coal or trying to meet the demand with nuclear or renewable, you're trying to manage the power consumption of the of the, at the size of Switzerland. That just boggles the imagination. The, po the project is definitely ambitious, I'll give it that, but the question is, is it feasible? I, I don't think so. Ambition isn't always reality, sometimes it's just fiction. I'm afraid that's all there is, DJ. Best of luck to NVIDIA and OpenAI on their 10 gigawatt project. I'm DJ Ware, and this has been the Cyber Gizmo. Thanks for watching.